Live, live, live. We're live, live, live. How's it going, everybody? <laughs> Welcome to Traveling with Bruce. This is Bruce. Uh, I'm here. It's Friday. Thank God it's Friday. Uh, March 23rd, 2018. Welcome to the show. Uh, five o'clock on a Friday night. And I knew it. I knew it. there was one thing I forgot, and that was to mute the phone. <laughs> there I go. And hello, everybody. Welcome back to my show for a Friday evening. I hope you're having a good week, getting ready for your weekend. Uh, I got one more show tomorrow at 2 o'clock, and then I get a day off. Ooh, what am I going to do with myself? Uh, how exciting is that? Um, here in good old Creston, British Columbia, where I'm hanging out, uh, we... Uh, Sitting at about, uh, or oh, we're sitting about 50 degrees, 48 maybe, 48 degrees today. Uh, mainly sunny. Uh, most of the day it was gorgeous, clear sky. But now the, the afternoon clouds have rolled in. We were told that this is probably coming. 30% uh, chance of showers. I don't think that's going to happen. It's just, uh, they're too light. But it's okay. It's all good. No snow. We're all good there. So we're not complaining. Spring is, uh, is it here? Uh, we hope so. Um, we certainly aren't going to get any, uh, you know, serious winter here uh, in the forecast for the next 10 days, what they're, you know, predicting. So I think we're going to be all right. But for the rest of you guys, I, I don't know. It's been iffy out there. Um, my friends in America, and I, and I have to say, uh, I got to say thank you to all my American viewers. Uh, my number one market for this channel, the USA, uh, there's no doubt about it. 70 odd percent of all my views are from America. I have a nice uh, collection of viewers from Canada and I Say hi to all my Canadian friends and, and all my Canadian viewers and all my friends down under. Oh, man, Australia and in the UK, uh, you guys are great. Uh, but I got to tell you, 190 countries, um, I've had viewings. Now, I think there's 190 countries. I'm using figures from YouTube. I really believe what we're dealing with here is some protectorate areas. Like I think they call Bermuda a country. <laughs> Maybe the Cayman Islands, they call a country. We're in reality, it's part of the UK. But, you know. I'll take viewers from wherever I can get them <laughs> and subscribers, and they're coming in from all over. So Caribbean, a whole bunch of viewers from the Caribbean watch me. Uh, I don't know if they watch me live like this often, but uh, they catch my channel all the time. And I welcome all of you guys uh, who are following me, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, love it. Uh, Europe, all over Europe. Uh, and then, of course, there's the Orient. Uh, there's Japan. Uh, definitely, I have viewers in Japan, and I thank you for finding me and uh, checking me out. Um, and I also have to thank a lot of you uh, uh, out there, um, and I'm not talking necessarily to my most frequent watchers of this live stream. I think I'm really talking to the uh, uh, sort of the people who are discovering me right now and who've been discovering me for the last month, and they're not sure what to make of me. Uh, but I've been getting a ton of comments from people um, that I, you know, never, I look at the username, I go, I don't know who this is, but I'm happy to address any questions you have, any comments you have. And uh, I really love it when you comment on my videos or you have any questions uh, for me. Um, I am getting a lot of questions about the MSC Seaside and I'm getting a lot of questions about uh, some advice, like what kind of advice would I offer? to specifically new cruisers. A lot of newbies are contacting me, which I, I just, I'm thrilled. I'm really happy. If there's any way I can help you as a new potential cruiser um, with any questions you have about going on a cruise, finding a cruise, um, you know, uh, uh, a specific ship you have in mind or an itinerary, I'm more than happy to do what I can. Um, at this point in time in my channel's development and life cycle, um, I'm still able to address all comments that pretty well come in. Um, I'm not to the point yet where, you know, I get a thousand comments a day and it's just physically impossible for me to get to them. I'm not that busy yet. I do have, you know, more subscribers coming every day and more viewers coming on as the days and the weeks go by. But I'm not yet one of those, you know, mega channels or larger channels where, where it's just overwhelming and eventually, you know, I'm going to have to have someone help me do it. Uh, so I'm happy to attempt to uh, get back to you and uh, send you a reply as best I can, as quick as I can. Uh, some of the comments are most entertaining. <laughs> and I, I get a kick out of them. And, and then some of the comments are uh, kind of nasty. <laughs> but hey, you know, we all have frustrations in our lives. Take it out on the creator. What the heck? Um, but I had a lot of fun in the last 24 hours with uh, one particular commenter who was uh, – 
uh, going after me about the MSCC side, and I kind of vented a bit yesterday on the uh, late show. <laughs> and those of you who are here, you are experiencing that. I was kind of, I was kind of having fun with that. A um, couple more exchanges coming back and forth, but you know, at the end of the day, it's it's all a matter of uh, perception and uh, expectations and um, wants, needs, and desires, I guess, uh, for certain cruisers and certain people. Um, Certain ships are fine the way they are. Uh, for some people, certain ships are not fine no matter what they do. And in the case of the seaside, there's been no shortage of comments coming to me from uh, my viewers on my live streams. I keep pointing at my phone over here because that's where the messages are coming in right now. Uh, and through my comments, um, I've made a number of videos and talked about the MSC as the weeks go by. And I keep getting more and more information coming to me from actual cruisers who are you know, they've been actually on the ship itself. I get all these updates and I pass it on to you. And, uh, you know, you folks have to decide for yourselves, believe me or don't, uh, you know, uh, you know, I'm not reporting on the deck of the ship right now. So, you know, I can't point at it and say, this is the problem with the ship, but I've been getting a whole bunch of uh, consistent, uh, comments about the MSCC side. Um, uh, and then I get, you know, comments I, I couldn't can't believe some of the stuff i'm hearing even more detailed uh, issues but i have also had to be fair i've had a number of comments they love the seaside people gone on the cruise had a great week loved it found no issues i'm glad to hear it because it's big money and you want to get a value for your money and and you know a new ship is exciting and, and uh, new design and everything this is what we want to it's what we want to see the high seas becoming even more even more exciting than they've been this is great so uh like i say i get i get both uh but occasionally i'll get a very passionate a very passionate common commenter about you know my comments on this or on that and hey all views are welcome i don't mind a bit and uh like i say if i do something wrong you, you let me know i i'm open to criticism uh and uh, we'll go from there no problem at all um anyway uh the channel oh my goodness the channel just keeps on going uh, this channel is growing and growing. I um, I was saying the other day, um, I think I put more content on YouTube as a, a YouTuber in the cruise ship area of, of anyone I know. I mean, I, I subscribe to a whole bunch of other YouTube channels that are all about cruising. And a lot of the channels out there, they do one, two, three, you know, four videos a week, that type of thing. Uh, but, but no one is on the air as much as I am. Um, but that's okay. I mean, you know, whatever works for you. I find this works for me. Uh, I get a great kick out of the interaction with my my viewers. And right now, while I'm here in Creston, uh, I can talk and I can uh, I can produce product right now. Um, but going forward, uh, when I start taking cruises, uh, you know, my content will be coming from cruise ships, and uh, it might be a series of you know videos that I'm doing uh, somewhat delayed. Uh, but if I can get a good connection. Uh, at an onshore port or whatever, I'll do a live stream uh, from wherever I'm at. You know, if, however I can work it. I've yet to discover all this. Quite looking forward to discovering all this. And of course, I'll let all you folks know uh, the minute I've booked a cruise or I'm looking at a cruise to book, I'll give you the heads ups. And hey, if we can do a meet and greet, that would be wonderful. Uh, I know a bunch of you would like to uh, kind of like to do that. So would I. Um, on the channel, uh, yesterday when I got off the air, um, we were sitting at about 1,412 subscribers. And uh, right now, just a few minutes ago, I took a peek at it, 1,423, another 11 subscribers overnight. And uh, welcome aboard 11 new subscribers since yesterday and uh, subscribers the day before and the day before and the day before. I remember about a week or so ago, we were stuck at 1,321 there for a while and uh, we've just blown past that. We're 100 past that already. We're heading for 1,500 subscribers now. We're 77 away from 1,500. Can you believe it? Uh, the big push we had to get to 1,000 on February the 20th, which we did, I think it was on the 19th of February. The big push. Uh, I was actually watching a little of that video today. <laughs> so I, I sometimes I go back to that that day where we were really pushing for 1,000 subscribers. We did the the, 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 the subscribe-a-thon, the Traveling with Bruce subscribe-a-thon, and uh, we, get, we went from uh, something like, Nine, 949 subscribers when I started the show to 1,002 when I got off the air. I wouldn't get off the air until we hit 1,000 and we did it. Well, now we're approaching 1,500. It's the next stop. Unbelievable. And this is March, like I said, 23rd. It's only a month, a little over a month later. And here's another 500. Awesome. Just awesome. 
So uh, people are finding the channel and they are they seem to like it and uh, they're joining in. So thanks everybody. Uh, not updated, uh, sorry, not uh, not monetized at the moment. Uh, still not being paid by YouTube to do what I do. Um, this is day now. What is this day? Thirty one or thirty two or something like that. So four and a half weeks. No monetization from uh, YouTube. Only uh, only income coming in is from generosity of my viewers. Uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, I have a super chat feature. Uh, on this channel because I have a thousand subscribers and this is the one thing that did kick in because I do have more than a thousand subscribers this channel is eligible to receive super chat donations from viewers directly uh, there's a dollar sign on the bottom of the uh, phone or on your computer and if you hit on that you can send the creator whatever you like and um, uh, this has helped compensate me for the lack of advertising revenue that I was kind of counting on. Uh, I thought for sure I wouldn't be demonetized when we hit a thousand subscribers, but then we were, but we were immediately put on review. We're still in review with everybody else, and uh, we thought it would be a week. <laughs> we thought, well, maybe two weeks. Now it's four and a half weeks, and we don't know how long it's going to be. <laughs> so that's the way it is. And to reward my um, my uh, my viewers, uh, some of my viewers. Uh, haven't even bothered to take advantage of me <laughs> and my my offer but i've been saying to all uh, viewers if you're gifting me uh, ten dollars or more uh us ten dollars or more i am offering as a gift the these medallions over here these sport medallions which are behind me all the time and now i have necklaces over here uh for different sports teams and uh again uh, uh mail them mail them anywhere you want uh and uh, like I say, that would be terrific. And I thank anyone who makes a donation. I just see one popping in there right now. Um, got a, got an email today that another one of my subscribers, uh, one of my viewers and donators, got their medallion. Uh, have had a couple of people now tell me their medallions have arrived. So this is great. I've, I've done a sh shift out a few already, and uh, and we'll just keep them going. So this is fantastic. On these necklaces here, I have a ton of uh, baseball teams, uh, major league baseball teams uh nhl hockey fair selection good selection of nfl and um and colleges i have u.s colleges as well on necklaces here so if there's a specific team you'd be interested in you just have to let me know uh, you can send me a direct email uh my email address is always included at the bottom of these videos when they post uh so yesterday's email already has the yesterday's video has my email in it the day before the day before uh, and a complete list of all the sport medallions that are available uh, by team and by non-team. Okay, enough of the commercials. Uh, let's say hi to who's here uh, talking to me today, uh, who's joined in, and let's catch up with everybody. If you're new to the channel, uh, sign in uh, if you want and say hi to me. Uh, tell me where you're located and what's your high temperature today. It's like, like I said, I'm three miles north of the U.S. border here in British Columbia. Idaho is just down here. And it's mainly sunny today, and it's almost 50 degrees, so we'll take it. Uh, Bob Hollis is the first in today. Uh, he said hello to me at 1.50 or, or 4.58, 1.58 my time, uh, two minutes before airtime. Hi, Bruce, 67 is sunny in Atlanta, so I, that's okay, 67. Peter uh, Heckema, hi, Bruce, beautiful in Tarpon Springs today. Lots of sun and 72 degrees. Received the medallion you sent me. There we go. Thanks very much. Glad you got my email. Yeah, I did. And thank you very much for that, Peter. That was wonderful. Um, uh, Cam Wilson said hello to me. Uh, hey, Bruce. Hey, everybody. Debbie Manuel is saying hi, Bruce and everyone. Uh, windy, but sunny and chilly uh, here in Northern California at 55 degrees. Uh, Iskew Park is here again today. Hi, Bruce. It's Iskew again in Thunder Bay, Ontario. Uh, hello, fellow subscribers. Uh, it's uh, minus uh, one Celsius, about 30 degrees Fahrenheit. It's sunny. Snow is slowly, uh, snow is slowly melting at least on the north side of most roads. Yeah, the sun is coming from the south and beating on the snowbank on the other side, and it's slowly eating it up. Uh, we sure want that. Uh, the more, the merrier. Absolutely. Norman Duarte is here. Sunny today. Forty in Bridgeport today. Hi, Norman. Welcome back. Uh, Teresa is here. Teresa, hi, Bruce. Plus three in Waterloo, Ontario. I got your message today, Teresa, about your trip. Uh, thanks for the update, Bob. Oh, hi, Bruce. Seventy-three in Naples, Florida today. Looking forward to today's show. Oh, yeah. Me too. I wonder what I'm going to talk about. <laughs> Randy Lucas. Hi, Bruce and all. Sunny and a high of 56 in Paradise, California. Well, you know, 56 and sunny is better than 56 and raining. So, all right. Uh, Paul Wilgus is here. Hey, Paul. 
Hi, Bruce. Uh, 48 here in Virginia, but winter storm a warning for tomorrow. Another one, five to 10 inches of snow. My God, Paul, you guys just not getting breaks. It's unbelievable. Uh, Richard Kornomaski, hello, Bruce, at the bar. <laughs> at bar, a sidebar, stopped in to say hello, 45 in Philly. <laughs> How you doing, buddy? I sent out a flyer's necklace today. I think that's what you wanted for your daughter. I'm praying that's what you wanted. It's on the way. Uh, Marlena, uh, Aaron Zeller is here. Hi, Bruce, 71 here in Aurora, Colorado. Not bad in Aurora. That's pretty good, Marlena. Pamela uh, Jordan is here. Hi, Bruce, and everyone, mostly cloudy and 64 Fahrenheit here in Iva, South Carolina. Fantastic. Uh, Charles Jordan, hello, Bruce. Uh, by the way, that uh, person, uh, that person is a total joke laughing out loud. <laughs> well, you know, I, I have to admit, I was, uh, I was looking up today uh, a, webs a, a, a YouTube YouTuber uh, that I follow. Uh, you all know, most of you know, Jim, Jim Zim Zimmerman, Jim Zimmerlin. Uh, I call him Jim Zim. And he's, uh, he's been on uh, YouTube as a cruise guy for years. He also talks about model trains. Uh, he has a large following. And um, uh, I had written him a, a, a comment. I sent him a comment about a video he did about the seaside. And I liked it very much. And I thought it was very detailed. And he listed the good and the bad about the ship. And I commended, I commented him. And he wrote back, very, very kindly wrote back and told me, thank you for your kind words. Uh, I'd love to meet him someday, actually. I would love to collaborate with him someday, actually. That would be kind of fun. Have, uh, do, uh, do a little collaboration between the two of us. That would be kind of fun. Um, he's got a great voice, too, that radio voice. Man, he's great. Anyway, uh, I noticed um, as I was looking through that, uh, looking through the comments, I was getting some reaction to my comment to him. Um, and... Uh, Again, nothing, nothing wrong there. Everything's fine. And then I was scrolling down the other comments that he was getting about his comment on the uh, on his video about the seaside. And uh, wouldn't you know it, who was in there? <laughs> the same individual that was commenting to me the last couple of days. And he was all over Jim, just like he was all over me. Um, I believe he's of a European persuasion and uh, didn't take kindly to, uh, you know, these North American guys slamming this Italian cruise ship. And, uh, and Jim responded to him. Uh, there was a comment about the depth of the swimming pool on the, uh, on the uh, seaside. There's, they're saying three, there are three pools on this, at least three pools on the seaside. And these swimming pools are six feet deep. Um, generally speaking. So they're so deep that most people can't stand up in the pools. Uh, they have to tread water to, you know. So if you, uh, Jim was making a good point that if you are watching people who go to the swimming pool, uh, they swim in it a little bit, they float in a little bit, and then they kind of go to the side and hang out, hang their arm out on the side to stay afloat. Because, you know, the middle, they, they, the water would be here on me, you know, I'd be, I'd be drowning. Um, and, and Jim was commenting how on uh, Carnival and on uh, Royal Caribbean and uh, Norwegian, most, most cruise ships, the pool depths are more like four and a half, five feet, five and a half feet. And so if you're six feet tall or taller, you can, you know, stand in the water and not have to tread water. And if you, uh, he, he issued a few photos or videos that he had taken over the years on a number of these other cruise lines and ships showing the pool area. And here were people in the swimming pools uh, standing in the water and holding a drink and kibitzing with friends and family and whatever. And dads could hold the, chi the children in their arms uh, because dad's standing on the bottom and the child is, you know, frolicking in the water with dad hanging on. And it's all great. But in this and the seaside, he's talking about there's no one ever using the pool. You go by the pools and there's hardly anybody in the pools because they're too deep to stand in. And the only folks you see at the pools are people who are hanging with their arms off the edge uh, so they won't sink into the, into the abyss. <laughs> so anyway, um, uh, this, uh, this individual complained about Jim complaining about that and saying, well, you know, what, what's the big deal with you Americans in a six foot deep swimming pool? Uh, you know, why is that such a big deal to you? And, 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 Jim responded saying, 
you know, for children and for, for adults with children, uh, you don't think this is a concern? Because there's not even a shallow end. Like most pools have a, a shallow end that's three feet deep, and then it goes down to five or six feet deep. You know, there might be a point in a carnival swimming pool or a Norwegian swimming pool where it is six feet deep. Yeah, but it's only at the one end. And on the other end, it's only two and a half, three feet deep because the pool is slanted like most swimming pools are. Well, not on the seaside. They're all they're six feet deep, right down to right on the edge. Period. And so, except for the kiddie pool, let's. I hope you want to defend the children's pool. There's, there's no problem with the children's pool. Anyway, so the the, <laughs> the, the kibitzing was going back and forth, and uh, you know the one the one commentator was just going up and down Jim for his comments, and then he was going up and down on me, and I just responded back, going, I, "I'm just telling you what I'm getting. I'm t I'm telling you what I'm hearing." I'm telling you what my viewers are telling me who've been on that ship. Uh, and it isn't just one, there is a bunch. And so, you know, what are you going to do? So I, I uh, anyway, <laughs> such fun, isn't it? Yes, that's fun. Uh, let's see. Um, uh, let's see here. Uh, let's see here. Pamela, Pamela, Charles, Jordan. Uh, okay. Mar uh, Robert McCormick, mid eighties here in Yuma, Arizona. Canadians are getting ready to head back to Canada. Yes, sir, uh, Robert. What are we talking about now on March 23rd? Yeah, about the next week, two weeks, three weeks. April is the big exodus. It begins. Yes, sir. Uh, Randy Lucas, Bruce, and all, do you wait until final payment date to uh, pay off the cruise? Or do you do you all pay it off at the time of booking? Oh, okay. Um, I've done both, I guess, is my answer to that. Um, I guess it depends on how far out the cruise actually is uh if the cruise is like um less than two months to go like six weeks five weeks I'll, I'll just pay the shot right there um if the cruise is uh six eight months out something like that five months out, i might just pay a deposit and just you know hold it and then uh, pay the balance uh you know with a month or so to go or something like that um you know it varies uh but i do like to i prefer to get the tips uh, uh prepaid um as well so that uh, when I get on the cruise ship, if there's a room credit waiting on my account, uh, that's for my wife and I to use for whatever we want on the ship. I don't have to worry about, oh, yeah, don't worry about the credit because you've already still got the tips to add on and all that stuff. And, and so I like to do it that way. I uh, hope that answers your question. Uh, Tommy Eaton. Uh, hey, Bruce and all. It's 67 and sunny in Jacksonville, Florida, by the way. When is your next cruise? Oh, by the way, when's your next cruise? Uh, Tommy, I haven't booked my next cruise yet. I'm uh, I'm really thinking, uh, my wife and I have been kind of chatting about it. Um, she knows and I know uh, that, uh, that I am dedicated to just working this new channel to a much more effective level until at least the fall, like through the summer. So that's August, September. Uh, most of October. I'm kind of leaning towards uh, late October, November, maybe early December. Somewhere in there will be the first cruise. Um, but it could be that I do a back-to-back. -back. Uh, you know, anything is possible, basically. But um, nothing is determined. Nothing is carved in stone here, uh, except the, uh, the, the amount of time that I've been dedicating to this channel's success, which I will continue to do. Um, I'm putting in 12, 14 hours a day uh, on this channel and all these other social sites that I'm using to help promote this channel. And I'm trying to perfect that to a better degree. And then I want to launch uh, sort of a merchandise line uh, for this channel, Tra you know, traveling with Bruce stuff, fridge magnets, t-shirts, uh, polo shirts, hats, uh, you know, anything. So I can raise some extra cash flow from other sources other than, rather than just advertising or, or just super chat or, because channels succeed, creators succeed with multiple flows of income rather than just one. Because I don't anticipate having 10 million, uh, 10 million subscribers in a year and doing you know three million views a month. I, I, that that's not in the cards for this channel that I'm aware of. <laughs> because even the largest channels in my space uh, are not that. Watch, I don't I don't uh, attract eight to sixteen year old children. Uh, who love playing video games uh, as my viewers. That's not my my forte. So it's a slow, steady growing channel with a solid core of of uh, viewers and subscribers that I will you know grow with and then have these different lines to uh, to uh, enhance my revenue with. Anyway, that's a short answer to that question, I hope. 
Um, Steve Bartley is saying here, my travel agent vacations to go notified me the day before payment due, then used my credit card on record to pay on the day. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm assuming you, that was arranged. You'd given them that approval to do so. I'm, I'm assuming, uh, let me know. Otherwise, uh, Teresa McFarland, I personally wait until final payment is due. Teresa says right on, uh, again, you know, you have the right to, to, Wait as long as right up till the date and then make your payment. Absolutely. Loves to travel is here today saying, uh, hi, it's 80 and windy in Kansas, but it's 80. It, is it a warm wind? Uh, kind of. Yeah. Uh, welcome back. Loves to travel. Uh, you know, windy, eh, 80. Ooh, uh, not bad. Bob Hollis. Say, hey, Randy, uh, depends when we book our cruise. This is an answer to when do you pay? Uh, if 90 days or less, uh, pay all at once. Uh, otherwise, we make down payment and pay the balance when due. I, I agree with that. Steve Bartley, 72 and sunny after a brief rain in Greeley, Colorado. Okay. Charles, uh, welcome back, Steve. Uh, Charles Jordan, Randy Lucas, uh, we like to pay all of it off but $1. This allows us to get the travel insurance before the cruise if we need to. That's interesting. That's very interesting. I, I guess you... Uh, Using a strategy to get that's that's really interesting. That's a good one, Charles. I like that. Tommy Eaton, don't forget to give Bruce a thumbs up. Thanks for all you guys. By the way, I I, I told this story the other day, and I this occurred to me today, and I thought I'd mention it to you. I told you this story the other day. Those of you who don't know, um, I had a I had a visitor to my channel about a week or so ago. Might have been a week today. Um, and this individual uh, visited my channel. Um, in the evening after i had um done my live stream so so i had already posted my live stream for the evening and i was just hanging out on the couch talking to my wife watching a little bit of television over here and uh i always keep an eye on my my channel my youtube channel i have i have bar graphs that show me the activity of the channel and all that sort of stuff and out of nowhere uh out of just nowhere around oh, 8 30 at night nine o'clock at night uh these blue bars started to show up <laughs> viewing views and uh, normally I get about, oh, one to five views in a minute uh, for activity. So sometimes I get three views in a minute, then I'll get two, then I'll get four, then I'll get one, then I'll get four. It varies. Uh, so in a typical hour, I might get 80 views, 100 views. It depends on the time of the day or the night. The later the evening goes, the views start to drop off because most of my views come from North America. And as we get late, the North Americans are going to sleep. Anyway, this particular evening, uh, my bar graph just started going. I'm looking at it going, saying to my, my, my Jennifer Aniston lookalike wife, honey, uh, Mrs. Trowling with Bruce, you know what? I'm getting 10 views a minute. I'm getting 10 views a minute every minute. It's just like not so like 9, 10, 9, 11, 8, 12, 10, 11. Minute after minute after minute after minute. I had this going for about 15 minutes. And on top of that, I had my regular viewers still watching, one to three views a minute, of course. And so this was fluctuating. And so my, my view count was really climbing. And it was it was got to the point where I was running at a, a, a view rate of something like uh, 300 views in an hour. Uh, which is highly unusual for eight at night. <laughs> triple, you know, trip, at least triple. And I thought, wow, you know, what's going on? And, you know, and so I'm looking for what video is causing this disturbance. Uh, did I did I do a video on a topic? And is this topic trending on the internet? You know, I, who knows, right? So I'm looking. I can't find a video that's spiking anywhere. And I I can see the most the 25 most active videos real time at any time on my channel. And sometimes I only have 15 videos that are really being watched. And other times I have more than 25, but uh, the bottom five or 10, only one view each. So here I am looking, I see 25 videos being watched. Oh yeah, yeah. The top 15 have multiple watch, but the bottom 10, just one each, one each, one each. One each. And as the minutes go by, and as the time goes by, I notice that, uh, that the channels, the videos on the bottom, the singles, they just keep changing all the time. There are more singles. There's more just singles. And so I'm putting two together, two and two together going, oh, okay, something or somebody is watching every one of my videos. But then I'm looking at my watch time and I realize, well, they're not watching the video very long. They're coming in pretty quick and they're going out pretty quick. And I assumed that this might have been YouTube. 
the YouTube analytical computer checking out my work. No, it was a nasty little visitor uh, who was watching every single video I ever made and put a negative, a, a thumbs down on every video that they visited. 142 thumbs downs uh, that evening. And uh, I saw that report two days later because it takes a couple days for the, the analytics to catch up with all my reports. And sure enough, uh, the day before I had five thumbs downs and, you know, 100 something thumbs ups. The day of I had, uh, you know, 80 thumbs ups and 140, no, I had 120 thumbs ups and 142 thumbs downs. And then the next day, uh, you know, 100 thumbs ups and six thumbs downs and back to normal. So there's this chart. <laughs> doing this and uh, we have a nasty little visitor so i'm just saying uh tommy eaton thanks for saying to everybody give bruce a thumbs up i'm just telling you folks if you ever want to take the time <laughs> to uh go through my channel <laughs> and watch go to every one of my videos and watch five seconds as soon as the video loads up and you want to give me a thumbs up on every video i've ever made well you're more than welcome to do so <laughs> and if i had 100 subscribers out of 1400 do that <laughs> it'll take you a while well, that would generate about 10,000 thumbs ups in one day <laughs> that would just blow the youtube computers out of their minds wondering what's going on with this guys i'm just saying hey you know because i looked up information from youtube about whether i can reverse these thumbs downs because this is just an attack it was just a you know the guy hacked in and was just trying to knock my ratings up and youtube says there's nothing we don't do anything about that anybody can do that up or down one two seconds of view time you can make a thumbs up or thumbs down and do whatever you want youtube will not interfere will not reverse will not regulate it uh but it's an engagement and they ins insist even though you got thumbs downs because other creators have had this happen much more than me and much larger numbers than myself some some guys have a thousand videos out there uh it's apparently every time you get one of these or one of these it's engagement and it's activity and it just views the channel as a more active channel just a positive thing so i'll take the 142 thumbs down so can't do anything about it and i got i got some traffic out of it so there you go so yeah like any of you sitting around this week with nothing to do well give bruce a bunch of thumbs ups <laughs> that would be funny uh wes morrison remember to give bruce a thumbs up thank you wes 79 here in new Brunfels. now Bob, oh, uh, you kicked in. Uh, were you the first one to do that? Uh, this is fantastic. Okay, well, here we go. Bob, oh, kicked in a dollar ninety nine, and he says just because. And I thank you very much. And then Peter Heckema kicked in there. Uh, he's saying treat Jennifer to another hot dog at Costco. <laughs> two dollars from Peter. Thanks you two guys very much. Two two super chats back to back. That's a first. There we go. Two one one after the other. Fabulous. Thank you very much uh, <laughs> for the contributions. Uh, Lisa Artis is here. Hi. Discovered your channel 30 minutes ago. Great tips. Lisa, thank you for coming by. She's telling me she's from uh, normally beautiful, normally, Ensenadas, California. Well, yeah, normally gorgeous, gorgeous. Uh, welcome to the channel, Lisa. I uh, I hope you're getting a lot out of it. I, I'm sure you will. You are surrounded by uh, a whole bunch of my regulars who are here every day. Uh, and we get newbies every day, just like yourself. And welcome to uh, to the chat. If you have a question about anything, you know, about cruising or cruise ship or whatever, you just, just let me know. There are no dumb questions. Every new cruiser needs to know the info, and we're more than happy to help you on that. Otherwise, you know, sit back and enjoy and uh, watch the show. Tina is here. Tina Hote uh, from uh, Hi Bruce, Chile, a uh, chill, and she says, watching you after a very long day at work. And I think Tina is in Toronto, Ontario, if I recall. Welcome back, Tina. Uh, yeah, chillax. It's Friday. It's Friday night for you. You know, take her easy. Absolutely. Randy Lucas, welcome. Lisa Artis from, from Randy. Here come the hellos. Uh, Norman Duarte, don't forget the thumbs ups. Bob Hollis, welcome, Lisa. Teresa McFarland, welcome to the channel, Lisa. Charles Jordan, hey Lisa, artist, welcome to the madness, laughing out loud. Uh, Lisa, I hope you like what you see. Uh, if you like the channel, uh, you can subscribe anytime you want for free. There's a button there, there's a button there. One of these buttons has a little bell notification icon beside it. You click on that, you will automatically be notified every time I post a new video or when I'm going live. And generally, I go live eight times a week, Monday to Friday at 5 p.m. Eastern, Saturdays at 2. And then Tuesdays, Thursdays, also at 8 p.m. So I go on 
eight times a week. Is that eight times a week? It is eight times a week. I lose track. I'm on all the time. So welcome. Uh, let's see here. Uh, <laughs> Cam Wilson loved his MSC Seaside video. Was that the one from yesterday or the one I did? My, I, I've been referring, I've nicknamed that one The Rant. <laughs> Debbie Manuel, hi Lisa, Lisa Artist, thanks everyone, friendly bunch, oh yeah, we are, uh, Sunny Wallace, hi Bruce, lovely day here in Mississauga, Ontario, uh, Sunny Wallace on MSC Seaside Pools and Hot Tubs closed at 8 p.m., wow, are you going to be kidding me, closed at 8 p.m., what, is this Europe, is this, is this a European thing, <laughs> I don't get it, I don't, the MSC Seaside, it just it just uh, befuddles me to no end. Uh, he's saying, Sonny is also saying, going on the NCL Norwegian Bliss, brand new ship on June the 8th to Alaska. Awesome. That's going to be awesome. Uh, Sonny Wall says, hated MSC Seaside. That ship sucks. See, see, see? It's, not, it's not me making this up. It's see? That was what the rant was all about yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Randy Lucas, um, uh, SW, we love the Alaska cruise, uh, Sunny Walls. Fantastic. Teresa McFarland, Sunny, let us know how the bliss is. I'm going on it in February. Debbie Emanuel, Sunny, I will be on the same ship a few weeks after. Can't wait. Can't wait. That's going to be awesome, you guys. Teresa McFarland just booked the NCL Encore today for the November 2019 sailing. That's the brand, brand new one uh, for November 2019. Awesome stuff. Kathy Butler said, uh, saw a travel agent post a review of his sale on the MSCC site. He said it was an amazing ship. So to call him now to book your vacation, obvious bias. <laughs> and I've heard the opposite from, uh, from uh, people about uh, how travel agents are, are basically not uh, recommending the ship at all. And they will not book a client on the ship because they're afraid that the client will be mad at them when they get back. How dare you put me on that ship? What are you thinking? Didn't you know about it? Yeah. Uh, interesting. Sunny Wallace, uh, Teresa will do. Alaska cruise should be fun. Uh, Debbie Manuel, oh, Teresa, where is the ship going? Uh, Teresa says the uh, San Juan, St. Thomas, and Tortola. Fantastic Caribbean cruise. It's going to be nice. Uh, Sunny Wallace, MSC Seaside. Ship is so bad. So bad. No internet cafe. No walking or jogging track. Oops. I couldn't believe how much this ship sucked. I hated it. it it's not, isn't that amazing? It's a cutting edge design. They, you know, they made it all different. I'm the, I'm the kind of guy that loves to take a walk on the promenade deck. And for those of you who don't know, if you're a newbie, the promenade deck uh, is it, it's a traditional deck on cruise ships from the Titanic and going back where you're walking around the outside of the ship outdoors. And uh, generally speaking, you can walk uh, usually around the entire ship where you don't quite get to the very front of the ship, like on the Titanic where you hold your arms out, you know, not quite that far. But you you get towards the nose of the of the front and then you cut the corner, you cut inside a hallway, and then you come out the other side and you walk all the way back. And if the ship is a thousand feet long, the promenade decks, the side, the long sides. You're talking 850 feet each side to walk. It's wonderful. It's just wonderful. In one direction, you might be walking into the wind or, you know, the wind coming at you from an angle. And on the other direction, going back, the wind is kind of hitting the ship before it gets to you. So it's, it's quite calm. Uh, sometimes it's so windy on a cruise ship, depending on the weather, that you can only walk up and down the one side of the promenade deck because the other side, is, you're getting, you know, spray from the ocean and, it's too windy. Well, it's fine. But with 850 feet, it's fantastic. And for joggers uh, and for speed walkers, uh, the promenade deck is ideal. It's flat and you've got a long distance and you can just huff it or jog it and you go around and around and around and, you know, you're looking out at the sea as you're moving along the ocean. It's beautiful. I love the promenade deck. When a ship doesn't have a promenade deck, that's a big strike in my book. That's the first of three strikes right there that this ship's in trouble right now. And the the, the uh, seaside is a brand new cutting edge design. Never, no ship has ever been built and made to look like this one. This is a one-off. Uh, and here we are, here we have a cruiser who's going, there's no promenade deck, there's no jogging track. Like, I mean, come on, uh, what, what are we supposed to do? Sit around and just graze all the time? Like, makes no sense. So yeah, it's, it's frustrating, really frustrating to hear this. 
Uh, Charles Jordan, uh, Sonny Wallace, thumbs up. Uh, Kelly Stoyanovic is here. Hey, Bruce, in Cleveland today, cold and sunny, 38 degrees. Ooh. Kelly, welcome to the show uh, from Cleveland. From Cleveland. At least it's, uh, at least it's uh, sunny. <clears throat> and uh, stay warm out there, please. Uh, Teresa McFarland, good to know, Sonny, about the MSC. Uh, I had it booked for this November. I cancel it today. I book Regal Princess instead. Uh, yeah, a lot of folks are canceling the cruises on suns on the seaside. Sonny Wallace, I will cruise any cruise line but MSC. They, that doesn't have anything to do with it. Cam Wilson, I love playing video games, but I love cruise ships more, laughing out loud. <laughs> right on. Sonny Wallace, Wallace uh, going on to say, Teresa, you will probably uh, have a better cruise on Princess than on the MSC. No, couldn't, no kidding, no question about it. Donna, a manic man, Kinnan is here. Hi, Donna. Uh, hi, 46 here in Beloit, Wisconsin. Welcome back. I haven't seen you for a little while. Welcome back to the channel. Sonny Wallace, thumbs up to 100, uh, some thumbs up, 100 fold for Bruce. Love you, Bruce. Thanks, Sonny, so much. Your kind, all your kind words, folks. I love it. It's fantastic. Uh, Scott Batchley, hi, Bruce. The sun is shining and nice again in Ventura, California. 63 and a great day. So the rain has stopped. And it's gotten sunny in California. It never, it never rains in Southern California. Isn't that what they? Isn't that how the song goes? Fantastic, Sunny Walls, Bruce. No fake news. You are the real thing. You're not, not. Oh, you watched yesterday's show, didn't you? <laughs> I was calling myself fake news because that's what apparently that's what I was. Someone was calling me fake news. Uh, Sunny Wallace can't wait to see you on a cruise. Zip hug. <laughs> <laughs> Nina Frank, uh, good evening, Bruce, and everyone. One degree Celsius here still. You folks in Miami, Fort Lauderdale, don't know how lucky you are just to be able to jump on a cruise whenever you feel like it without all the hassle. Well, that's true. Uh, if you living in uh, you living in Florida and you're a little drive away from a cruise port or you're close enough where you can get a friend a relative to drop you off at the pier and <laughs> you don't even have to take a cab. Oh man, have you got it good? Absolutely. Now the same as can be said, uh, friends in Los Angeles and Southern California or San Diego, of course, uh, Long Beach, boy, you know, you're able to drive to the port and just get dumped off by somebody, you know, and you return the favor the next time. I mean, man, have you got it? For those of us, me included, who have to travel through an international border, first of all, and then we got to figure out how to get to where we got to get to. You know, it's an ordeal. I mean, it can be an ordeal. Now, I love to make a, a whole trip on it. I like to incorporate the travel as part of the holiday. So I don't like to have a, a trip to a cruise ship be a stressful, panic attack filled ordeal. And I recommend the same for all of you out there who are in the same boat that I am. If you've got to go to a cruise ship via aircraft, and it might be, you know, a connecting flight with today's aircraft world in which we live, everybody has hubs now, you know. Uh, I recommend you you try to to organize your travel before and after the cruise as stress free as humanly possible. I, I had a comment today. I had a call to uh, comment right on one of my videos. I forgot to mention. An uh, individual was telling me that they were going on a cruise departing from San Juan, Puerto Rico, and I, I know what happened. I know exactly what happened. They saw a cruise out of San Juan, Puerto Rico that was so cheap. Such a bargain, they, they couldn't resist it. They, they, they thought, oh, this is what a bargain. We can do a Caribbean cruise out of San Juan, Puerto Rico with a balcony for, for this little money. I mean, we're talking deals down there. But uh, they were asking me, uh, well, is everything working again? That was the question. Is everything working down there again? And I'm going, oh, my goodness. San Juan, Puerto Rico, is everything working again? Oh, my gosh. Well, it depends on what day of the week you're asking me because it changes day to day. Uh, I immediately wrote back saying, look, uh, I found out, though, that they are not cruising till the end of May, so they have time. So I said, look, <laughs> by whatever you do, make sure you get to San Juan at least the day before the cruise. Don't try to play Russian roulette and get there the day of departure because you are gambling everything going wrong on you. Because one, it could be a non-San Juan problem. It could be a problem in Cincinnati. It could be a problem in Chicago. It could be a, 
It could be a, a blizzard, you know, blizzard number 15, a nor'easter number 15 in, you know, in New York. And uh, the flight that you were supposed to catch, the plane, the actual aircraft is stuck in New York. And it's supposed to come to you. Then you're supposed to get on the plane to go to wherever you're going to get then to another connection to get to San Juan. And you didn't even get off the ground. You're already five hours late because of a snowstorm that's not even in your town. That's the first problem. The second problem could be a mechanical problem for any aircraft. If you got to go on two or more airplanes, you're gambling that each plane is on time. Each, each plane doesn't break down. Uh, there's no moron on the aircraft conducting any kind of stupid things. And, uh, you know, everything's going to, everything works out perfectly for you. Everything. Good luck. <laughs> so don't do that. And then the third problem, the next problem, is the San, San Juan problem. And that's where the night before your cruise ship came back, uh, you know, before you're even getting up, there was a major thunder shower that hit. The tropical thunderstorm hit San Juan, Puerto Rico, and knocked out the airport's radar for six hours because it's being held together with duct tape right now. I hate to be so critical, but the San Juan airport is, is in fragile condition. And San Juan, Puerto Rico is in fragile condition all over the place with its infrastructure. Because we're hearing stories all the time about power outages to this day. Every hotel has a backup generator. Every hospital has multiple backup generators. And there's only so much diesel fuel to go around. And just because they have backup generators, the airport too, it doesn't mean that the air conditioning is going to be on in the terminal. It only means the emergency services are on. And if the airport goes on to emergency power uh, scenario, flights are going to be automatically two hours late. And the schedule will be greatly reduced by half. And maybe your flight's canceled. They can't get a landing slot. You're in Miami on time. You made two flights already. You're ready to go to San Juan for your cruise. You can't get out of Miami. And your cruise leaves today. And you're cooked. You're done for. So at least plan one day in advance if you're going to leave from San Juan, Puerto Rico. One day in advance. Maybe two days, or maybe take three or four, enjoy some beach time down there if you, you know, want to stay in a resort that might have power, might not, depending on the conditions. Uh, this is the reason why San Juan Puerto Rico's cruise lines, uh, cruise deals are so good. They're so cheap because passengers are afraid to miss their flight in, to miss the ship, to get out on time. And then, of course, the reverse after the cruise is over, you got to get out. Now, if you're getting out the same day, you're gambling that. Everything's going smoothly. You should be okay getting off the ship on time. You probably get off the ship in the morning. That shouldn't be an issue unless it's a hurricane and the ship can't get into the harbor. Very unusual, unlikely. Uh, but then planes won't be leaving anyway. But uh, if you can get off the ship on time, great. But if there was a storm in the Northeast U.S. and your flight is going from New York to Miami to San Juan and then back to Miami to New York and that's you, your flight might be sitting up in, Lo in, in Long Island. It might not. It may not have gotten off. And there's there's the reverse problem. So you may want to have a hotel after your cruise uh, for a night and go that next day and keep an eye on your flight schedules and whatever else. Again, I just mentioned this as a safety tips, uh, especially for the newbies out there, because this is the problem that we've been hearing about and that is that, that people have been experiencing with San Juan, Puerto Rico since the hurricanes. And that season starts in June, July, later this year, July, August, it starts again, the new hurricane season. And boy, I'm, we're all praying that they don't get hit with another one. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. Oh, my goodness. So, yeah, this idea of being able to drive to a cruise, a cruise port from your house, <laughs> that's a luxury. Uh, that The story I just told everybody, Floridians who live close to a port like that, if you're near Tampa, you're near Miami, you're near uh, 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 Port Lauderdale, and then Port Canaveral, any of those four ports, just those, you're already, you've already got, you got it going on. <laughs> and you're saving money, frustration. The hairline will be much better looking than this one because you, the stress won't, the hair won't be falling up from the stress. I should have moved to Florida years ago. What was I thinking? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Sunny Wallace is saying, we'll let everyone know how the Norwegian Bliss is from Alaska. So darn excited, I can imagine. Michelle Lucas, uh, I am uh, I am on thumbs up duty. 
Here we go. She's going to hit me with thumbs ups. Oh, my gosh. Nina Frank, Sunny Wallace, cold. Uh, Sunny Wallace, Michelle Lucas, thumbs up. Awesome. Chevy and First is here. Hey, y'all, I need excursion advice. My friend does not swim. Uh, would she still have fun on the snorkel slash sail excursion? She could stay on the boat, right? I really want to do an excursion. Well, um, Chevy and First. Um, okay, this is a this is a simple question, but it could have a complex answer. And and from my perspective, just so you know, uh, I get seasick uh, easily if I'm on a small little boat in wavy water. On a cruise ship, no problem. I I don't mind it. I can see the horizon doing this, you know, from the back of the ship where I, where I'm standing here, and I can see. Doesn't bother me. Uh, I'm at the front of the ship looking back and I can see, you know, I see that doesn't, doesn't bother me, but put me on a little power boat or a tiny little sailboat or something. Like that, and it's beside the pier and we're doing this. Oh, uh, it's not good. That's why I hate tenders. I don't like tenders getting off cruises, uh, cruise stops. So Cabo San Lucas, I've been there three times, never got off the ship because you got to do a tender to go to the shore and back. Cayman Islands, I've done the tender. I've been there one time on a cruise, and I did the tender because I used to live there, and I was determined to go to my the old hometown. So that was fine. Uh, although it was wavy, I powered through it. Uh, but generally, that's my that's my issue. Now, uh, I've been on a uh, excursion to uh, Stingray City uh, when I first moved to the Cayman Islands with my wife and daughter. We took we took a uh, an excursion, even though we were living there. You know, going to be living there full time. We'd never been to Stingray City before, so we went to Stingray City with Captain Marvin's, and the ship could hold, the boat could hold twelve or fifteen of us, three or four crew people, took good care of us, and we had a wonderful time. But I found that uh, that uh, sitting at the um, in the water near the reefs, there was a beautiful area to snorkel there. The water's about fifteen feet deep, and being salt water, you're quite buoyant. And they do give you, if you want, these arm uh, inflators, these inflators that you, you slip up on your arm, and so you're just kind of floating in the water, looking down. You got your you got your snorkel on, your mask on, and the snorkel, and you're just looking down at an aquarium, like you're on the top of an aquarium. It is incredible. The colors, the vegetation, the the wildlife is wild, and the turquoise water. But I found that sitting in that boat uh, after I was done snorkeling, we're we're, we're doing this because the the the, the boat is. 35 feet, 40 feet long, 12 feet wide, and it's doing this. And that got me. That, that just got to me, and I was not feeling well. I couldn't wait for, to get out of there when it was all done. But it was a three-hour cruise, and it was only in the last 40 minutes that I felt it. But when we were heading back to port, uh, we were moving again, moving back to the harbor. I was fine again. I was you know, over it. But, oh, I didn't like it. So your friend, to answer this question, your friend, your friend, can they handle that? Uh, because if you're the one going in the water to snorkel and have fun and they're going to stay on that boat, can they survive what could be a wavy experience, depending on wind conditions, tide times, high and low tide, you know, whatever. So um, that's a, a bit of a complicated answer to this question. On the one hand, yeah, she could stay on the ship and have a great old time if she can take it. But if she can't handle that, she might be green when you come back uh from the you know the bobbing up and down and that might be too much i just don't know uh silo uh hey bruce I was watching on my xbox one but i cannot comment back to the laptop how is the man the legend <laughs> well you should have watched me last night i was on a roll uh, i was ranting and raving last night i was like wasn't that bad we're having fun. How about that? We're just having fun. It's good. Lisa Artis, uh, thanks for going. Um, thanks. Thanks. Going on my first cruise, family reunion. Fantastic. Lisa, tell us, where are you going and what ship are you on? We're, we all want to know that. Uh, that's fantastic. We'll, we'll probably know the ship you're going on. We'll give you advice. Uh, Chevy and First, Lisa, my first cruise is in September. We got two newbies here in Forster. Randy Lucas, Bruce, uh, uh, Bruce, and all who uh, wait until final payment, the uh, payment due date. Do you monitor the price of the cruise to see if it goes down? Oh yeah, oh yeah, we do. We do monitor it. Um, if you're using a travel agent, um, uh, your travel agent should be monitoring it and should be able to get you a discounted uh, fare 
or they might be able to get you a room credit for the difference, something like that. If you're using vacationsgo.com, talk to them when you're booking the cruise and say, hey, listen, uh, you know, uh, the cruise is $7.99 for this balcony for my wife and I for the week. Uh, what if it goes down to $6.99? Do, do you guys protect us? They'll, they'll tell you what they'll do. You always ask. Kathy Butler made it, she says. 5 p.m. is so nuts in my house, laughing out loud. Hello, all. You've made it. Welcome, Kathy. <laughs> Randy Lucas, Lisa, uh, A, you're going to love it. Uh, Silo is saying, oh, forgot it. Oh, forgot. It snowed this morning here in Seattle. Snowed in Seattle. Big flakes didn't stick. Weird. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, snow in Seattle. Oh my gosh. Teresa McFarland, Randy. Yes, always watching the cruise prices. And if it goes down, I just notify my travel agent for a price change. They say, hey, hey, hello. Hey, listen, uh, it went down 50 bucks. Uh, what's going on? Yeah, travel agent should be on that. Uh, Nina Frank, uh, shipping first. That's one of the pluses by going solo. You don't need to give a something about someone else's plans and problems. Well, well there you go. If you're If you're a solo traveler, it's just you and your concerns, your needs, wants, and desires that you have to look out for. But you can only complain to yourself. <laughs> but, yep, uh, you know, when you're talking with a friend and the friend is, you know, doesn't swim, well, you know, there's still issues to think about. So it's something to talk about. Absolutely. Sonny Wallace Bruce on the MSC promenade deck. You have to walk around the dining tables from the deck number eight buffet and have to walk through the smoking area. Cannot walk around the whole ship. What a farce. Yeah, I saw that unique looking balcony that they built, you know, looks like a, like a, I don't know how to explain it. It's kind of like a, it's kind of like they took a record LP and uh, made it into a giant uh, rectangular round shape thing and just popped it on the outside of the ship. Uh, yeah, I don't like it because it, it's open and it's, uh, the wind will get you. If it's raining, you get rained on. See, most promenade decks uh, in the early days, like when the Queen Mary was sailing and the uh, the uh, the old Queen Elizabeth, the old ocean liners, they had a promenade deck with nothing above you. You were exposed because you were walking along kind of the top of the ship. The smokestacks were just over there, you know, and you're, you had the best view from up top there, the promenade deck. Modern day cruise ships uh, like, like the Norwegian Jade that I enjoyed or the uh, Holland America Oosterdam that I enjoyed very much, those promenade decks are covered uh you're outside yes and there's a railing over here yes and you can lean on the railing look down at the water going by all that um but you've got a roof above you you've got probably the the the, the tenders the lifeboats are suspended above your head up there on the davits and so if it's raining out and it's just raining straight down you're not going to get wet now if the rain if the wind is coming across the ship you know this way and the ship's going that way, and the rain's going, yeah, the wind's going to be coming in, and it'll be wet on this side of the ship, yeah. But on this side of the ship, the rain is headed over there. The the promenade deck is dry. And so you just walk it up, up and down that promenade. On the MSC Seaside, you're exposed to all the elements because they built this platform, this flat, leveled platform around the ship with chairs on it, tables, loungers, uh, the restaurants, uh, they have gates and stuff, and it's exposed to the elements. And if it's raining out or really windy, you're not going to go from the buffet outside and eat on the on that deck. It's, your food is going to get blown off your plate. I mean, it's, your, your food will be cold in no time because of the wind that the ship generates by moving through the air. You know, so I, I looked at that and went, what are they thinking? I don't, I don't get it. I understand if you're at a port. You're at like a private island, a private K, and the ship is just sitting there, and it's a calm day. Yeah, that'd be pretty nice, but those are few and far between. How many days does a ship not move? It moves all the time. And the only time it's not moving is when you're at port to get off the ship to do an onshore activity, unless you stay behind. Yeah, so I, I was puzzled by that whole thing. It looks neat, but I don't know if it works neat. Yeah. Kathy Butler, when you block off a large portion of the front for Yacht Club, it's hard to have a promenade jogging track. Oh, that, that's the other. Yeah. The, the Yacht Club, just for those of you who are new and you don't know, on various cruise lines, they have what's called a premium uh, kind of a higher end first class uh, section. So uh, Norwegian has what's called the Haven 
the Haven Club or the Haven Spa Club, where they have two or three levels on the very top near the front of the ship. It's only reserved for suites and units for Haven Club members. You're probably paying two and a half times what we would pay two floors below that in a regular balcony room. On the MSC Seaside or on all MSC ships, the top level up there is called the Yacht Club. And that, again, is exclusive uh, uh, suites, larger suites, regular suites. But you're paying a premium to be up there. And you have a special uh, concierge area to look after whatever you need looked after. You have a bar up there that's exclusive to you. You have an observation deck that's exclusive to you. Might be a restaurant up there that only you and the others can go to from the Yacht Club. Because you're, you're paying the bucks. But the problem is that you don't have this ability to walk around the top of the ship because it's blocked off by this huge chunk of the front of the boat by the yacht club because god forbid you let the riffraff walk around the front of their window can't have that so this is uh making people angry <laughs> it's frustrating uh cruisers uh mz pretty diva eyes hi i'm following from michigan well how you doing uh, welcome to the channel. You, I think you're brand new. I've never seen this handle before. MZ Pretty Diva Eyes, great handle. Welcome to Traveling with Bruce. Uh, if you're a newbie to cruising, you've come to the right place. If you have any questions or comments about uh, cruising, let us know. If you're planning your first cruise, let us know. Tell us where you're going, when, and what ship are you going on. Everyone here will say hi to you and tell you all about the ship, anything you want to know. Randy Lucas, Chevy first. Yes, she can stay on the boat. Do the excursion. There you go. You got a friend. Uh, if you have a friend that doesn't swim, Randy's saying, take her. Uh, Peter Heckema, MSC might end up using their seaside type ships in Europe only. The seaside type ships don't seem to suit North American cruisers. So far, not so good. This will be an interesting thing to watch. I think they're going to build four of them. The second one is under construction. Now should be ready later this year. I think in the fall. Uh, Teresa McFarland, my husband uh, and I walk every day on the cruise ship on the promenade deck. We would be very unhappy if we wouldn't be able to do that. Yep, yeah, that's to me. It's it's three times at least three times a day. I'm out there on sea days. I live to go out there for a, for a walk. I love it. Yeah, I I would be uh, that would be a biggie, a big no no in in my book. Absolutely. Um, uh, MC Pretty Diva Eyes, I'm here to learn more about cruising. My ship was Disney for the children. Yeah, if you got kids, Disney cruises, absolutely. Uh, Kathy Butler's welcoming you, uh, MZ Pretty Diva Eyes, to the channel. Donna McMankinnon, I usually watch the reruns late at night. Third shifter here. <laughs> uh, welcome, Donna. You got me live today. This is great. Uh, Bob Hollis, uh, Peter. It's ironic, uh, MSC designed the seaside to imitate South Beach condos in Miami. Yeah, they, they, the design of the ship was to sort of honor Miami and, and imitate it, and yet it, it, it isn't working. <laughs> uh, Randy Lucas is saying, MZ Pretty Diva Eyes, you're in the right place to learn. Uh, and uh, MZ Diva is saying, hello, Kathy Butler. Uh, Bob O, uh, Bob O is sending me a dollar ninety nine again. He's saying, "Okay, Peter, I call your two dollars and raise you a dollar ninety nine." Thanks to you guys, this is great. I really appreciate it. All donations are gratefully and humbly accepted because uh, there is no ad revenue coming in from YouTube. They're not paying me to do this. MZ Pretty Diva Eyes, thank you, Randy. Bob Hollis, welcome, MZ Pretty. He says. Teresa McFarland, welcome, MZ Pretty. Uh, MZ Pretty is saying hello, Bob. Debbie Manuel, hi, MZ Pretty. MZ Pretty says hello, Teresa. Uh, MZ Pretty eyes, hello, Debbie. Sunny Wallace, Nina Frank, not sure what you mean, but can you explain? Uh, so what was that comment about uh, from her? Or where was that? Nina, 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 Nina. That's one of the posts going solo. Don't Oh, oh yeah, sure, going solo. Um, Nina doesn't, if you're going solo, you don't have to worry about uh, taking someone on an excursion. You know, you're on your own. Uh, let's see. T uh, Tammy Ray. Hello, everyone. Hi, Tammy. Teresa McFarland. Hi, Tammy. MZ Pretty. Hello, Tammy. Uh, Tammy Ray. Hi, Teresa McFarland. MZ and MZ as well. Charlie Bob. Hi, Bruce. I'm having a friend drop uh, me uh, in Baltimore for April the 14th. 
So the grandeur has a promenade deck and a jogging track. Yeah, you're set there. No worries, uh, Charlie. You're good to go. Tommy Eaton, I live 10 miles from uh, Jackson's uh, port in Jacksonville, Florida. Yeah, that's another port, Jacksonville. Absolutely fantastic, Tommy. Uh, Tammy Ray, I would love to live near a cruise a port. I would be on cruises all the time. Uh, Tammy Ray, correct with the spelling. Uh, Norman Duarte, uh, and get insurance, Norman is saying. Lisa Artis, uh, she can use she can use a floaty. Uh, I can swim, but depending on where my family snorkels, like the middle of the ocean, I'm more comfortable with a floaty. Yeah, exactly. They provide that on these uh, on these uh, uh, cruises, on these excursions. Uh, they also will have on board um, seasick medication if you need it, uh, or you can always ask. You know, before make sure to bring it yourself. If you have to have it, you have to have it. Uh, Peter Heckham, a, a hurricane season is June 1 to November 30. So, yeah, starting June 1, here we go. We don't know. Donna uh, uh, McKinnon, Chevy first. I don't swim either. I love to snorkel. It's it's great. I wear the life vest, and I don't look stupid. Yeah, you don't. Uh, a lot of people do that. And the thing, too, about wearing a life vest is now you can just you just lay there face down and look down and not worry about anything. It's great i think it's a fantastic thing to do uh, if you find that uh, that you you know just you don't feel like having to tread water all the time this is the way to go now my daughter when she was a kid she went down below and went 12 feet under and you know swam amongst the coral and looked around came up for air boom went down again i mean she was like a little dolphin but for those of us uh, of a certain age and of a certain temperament uh life best and just hanging out and looking down at that aquarium down there fantastic uh, Peter Heckman said, this could end up in a high stakes game, Bob. <laughs> Sending Bruce money. Oh, this could be expensive. <laughs> Lisa Artis is telling us, uh, Royal Caribbean Liberty of the Seas is her first cruise ship. It's going to be her first ship. Uh, Lady Luck. Hello, Bruce and everyone. Hey, Lady Luck. Welcome back. Randy, Lucas, Lisa. Uh, we're on the Liberty of the Seas in October. Uh, Lisa is saying, have to go to sleep. Night shift. Uh, uh, registered nurse here. I got to get rested for work. Take care, all. This was fun. I'll watch the rest when I wake up. Take care, Lisa. Thanks for coming by. Uh, Randy, we're going at the end of July, she's saying. Chevy first. Bye, Lisa. Judy Arnes. Finally sunny in Sacramento. Finally sunny in Sacramento. What a what a week. Judy Arnes, three more weeks till my transatlantic cruise from Miami to Southampton on the NCL. Jade cannot wait. Yes, yes. I've been on the Jade. I loved it. Uh, yeah, that'll be great. Had a buddy of mine going the Jade last year on the repositioning cruise you're going on. Loved it. Had a great time. Kathy Butler, good night, Lisa. Thanks for caring for people. Kathy Butler, Judy, that sounds amazing. Chevy Inverse, my first, my cruise has four port stops in a row and one sea day coming back. Should I plan the excursion on the first port day or the last port stop? The other two days will be beach days for cheap. Uh, good question. Um, it depends on where you're where you're stopping. Um, you know, pick the. It, it really doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. Um, pick the. Uh, you might want to do it first. I'm going to guess because you'll be all hyped up and ready to go. Uh, and then that way, the last day that might just be a port day where you just get off the ship and schlep around and just chillax, unless something comes up that you want to do. Uh, either way, you, you can't go wrong. Um, let's see here. Uh, the other thing, here's the other question. Another point I'll make. You're at the first port and that's, that's the, that could have been the, the, the excursion day. Uh, and you booked an excursion that day and you get there, it's raining, it's windy and it's awful. The excursion, excursion is canceled. Okay. Good ish because you now can book that last excursion day, that last port for your excursion day after all. It might work out that that's the day you can actually take the sailboat out. It could be the other way around. The first day you should have taken the excursion, by the time you waited until day the fourth stop, now it's raining and you can't go back in time. So I'd, I'd probably take the first opportunity and get it out of the way. Just a thought. A silo is saying a flight question, uh, October the 27th, cruising from uh, cruise from Los Angeles. Ship leaves at 4 p.m. We can take a Seattle to L.A. flight from 6 a.m. on. We can get in by 9 a.m., but October could be fog or snow. A room would be best. Wife 
thinks differently. Okay. Uh, the first cruise we ever took was out of San Diego. And uh, we came in um, by air to Los Angeles, actually, and drove to San Diego by a rental vehicle and then just dropped it off. And we did it the day before, and we were glad we did. That was that day. Um, I took another cruise out of Los Angeles where we were leaving the ship on the ship at four. This might be Princess if you're talking to L.A. We were leaving, I think, at four from L.A. as well. Uh, and we had booked a nonstop flight from Calgary to L.A. the day of the cruise. And uh, this is a number of years ago before we knew any better. Uh, but it worked out. We came in. Uh, we got on the plane at 8 in the morning. We took off on time. Clear skies. We had checked the weather for the week before the flight, and it was clear skies for us. And so we left on time, and we landed in L.A. at uh, 10, 30, 11 in the morning, whatever it was. And uh, I had a bus, uh, uh, a, uh, a charter bus from Princess, right from the airport, right to the ship. No problem whatsoever on the day of. So that worked out for us, and we had to cross the border. The plane that, that took us there uh, had come in um, the night before. Uh, the, uh, that flight, I forget the airline, it was a U.S. airline, uh, stayed at Calgary's airport the, the overnight. It sat there for like, uh, I don't know, six hours, uh, seven hours, because it got there at one in the morning. And we were the first on that plane to start its day with the new crew, and uh, everything worked out. But I have been to Calgary uh, trying to get on a flight where the flights have been delayed in the morning because of storms, either in Calgary or a storm where we were going, and we couldn't even get in the air, even though it's clear sky where we were. So there's that. Now, for your situation, Seattle, if you're taking a direct flight and it's two hours, something like that, direct flight, chances are good for you that you'll be okay. If you're taking a connecting flight, say Southwest, and you're being sent to or Oakland and then Oakland to LA, well, you're going to have to take the chances. But the good news of Southwest is they have so many combinations of flights to get you to LA, you should be okay. But you've got a point there about the fog. The other point I'll make was, is that when my wife and I flew into Los Angeles on the day of the cruise and we took the bus right to the ship, we didn't have a chance to stop anywhere on the way. We couldn't buy any cheap wine, couldn't buy any cheap sodas, couldn't buy any cheap snacks on the ground. Whereas the, the idea of getting to the, to the city the day before uh, is where even if you're, if you're taking a a flight to Los Angeles, you're taking a courtesy shuttle bus to the hotel. Uh, and then the next day, you're going to take a cab ride to the ship. The night before, you could take a quick cab ride to the local Walmart or a big grocery store or Costco and load up on the two bottles of wine and maybe a couple of dozen colas, sodas, uh, some snacks. And the savings of all those items could be, you know, $125, $150 $150 because bottles of wine on a cruise ship uh, that cost you $8 on shore run you $40, $45 on the cruise ship. So you can buy two of those. You just bought $90 with a cruise wine for 20 bucks. Well, there's $70 towards the hotel right there. So again, I, that's how I look at it back and forth. You sort of save on one, don't on the other. On the other hand, if you fly to LA, and you're going to take a cab to the cruise ship. You get the cab to stop at a Walmart on the way to the cruise, pick up your soda, pick up your wine, and then keep going. And the cab fare is 50 bucks, but you're saving $150 by what you just bought. Maybe that's the way to go. But you're going to take a cab right back. So anyway, I mentioned that. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, you know you could do? You could take a, a bus, a, a, the princess bus, right to the ship, right? And you and the wife, uh, you check your bags in, all right? And uh, then and, and then you leave with a cab. You leave from the terminal to a, to a Walmart right there. Do the shopping and put that stuff in your handbag, carry on, and then come back in and now do the formal check-in process. If you have the time, that might be the other option. I, I'm just mentioning. 
uh silo i say looking for trouble that's that's what uh silo is saying uh looking for trouble yeah chevy first i'm worried i will be tired if i plan on the last port day room is at the front of the ship so we'll be walking all week if the boat uh, on the boat to meals yeah like i said uh, you, you do it that first day i would do it i'd recommend you do it on the first day because by the end of the cruise you might be bagged and you might also, you know, have have that out of the way, burn some energy, enjoy, and now chillax for the rest of the cruise. Steaming bean. Bruce should do a late, late show for adults only. <laughs> now, the steaming bean, and those of you who don't know, the steaming bean is a regular viewer of ours. I love him. But you got to understand something about the steaming bean. This is a guy that's offered me $2 to take my shirt off on the air. So... You can understand he wants me to do a late, late show because this ain't for kids. <laughs> and I'm just saying, Stephen Bean, what's under this shirt isn't for adults either. <laughs> it really, it really isn't all that presentable anymore. Uh, you know, I'm not that vain. <laughs> Kathy Butler Silo, tell the wife she will be more rested and looking beautiful after a restful night before instead of straight from the plane rushing onto the ship well there, there you go. there's a strategy for it and kathy goes on to say I, I wouldn't take an excursion where my friend had to sit on the boat while i snorkel i wouldn't be comfortable plus in the ocean and can't swim is no you know, bueno for me uh, pick another fun one in my opinion there you go silo oh i agree less stress yep uh, iskew park disney story my son was 11 collecting pins at the resort and they did the same on the ship. We were in a huge line on the ship in the Disney store. And then to my surprise, the clerk checked my, called my son up to the front of the line, traded pins with him, then went on, the, uh, went on with the 30 to 40 adults in the line. Well, how about that? Lady Luck, that sounds relaxing, snorkeling. Easy Park, uh, Disney treats the kids like kings and queens. There you go. Kathy Butler, what a wonderful memory. Askew. Uh, <clears throat> Chevy and First, uh, Kathy Butler, uh, I understand what you're saying. This is my first cruise, and I uh, could have went with friends on a different cruise. Didn't realize till we booked it. She doesn't swim. I love the water. Yeah, there you go. Uh, Chevy and First, I really want to do uh, an excursion. I just don't know when. Uh, I will have the chance to snorkel again. Yeah, there you go. Uh, you know, and, and it could be that you do the you do the excursion and your friend just stays on the ship or your friend does a land excursion and they do a they do a tour with, uh, you know, some of the other passengers on one of the tour buses and they do a land tour. You could do that, split up for the day and then get together after compare notes at dinner. Uh, Silo saying was on the Jade last November, December. Great ship. Great crew. The solo guitar player in the atrium lounge is great. Uh, do not miss the uh, Teppan uh restaurant. Beef melts in your mouth. There you go. High recommendation right there. Kathy Butler, Chevy, maybe offer her a spa day on the ship while you go snorkel. A spa day by yourself sounds amazing. Kathy Butler, or maybe this will motivate her to learn to swim. <laughs> At least doggy paddle and float, blah, blah, blah. She can practice on the pool on board. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> the steaming bean. Uh, please freshen my memory where you stay in New Jersey, where you stay in New Jersey when you visit New York City. Oh, oh okay. Uh, I uh, when I'm in uh, when I visited New York, I've been to New York now three or four times. And the last, I should say, the last three or four times I've been to New York, my wife and I, we like to stay at the Embassy Suites in uh, New Jersey near the Meadowlands. Um, there's a, there's a, there's a, uh, um, there's a, uh, there's a, uh, <laughs> the hotel, the embassy suites, there's an embassy suite that's right near the convention center near, uh, the Meadowlands. And there's a bus that, um, uh, comes by, I think every 45 minutes that heads right through the Queens tunnel, right to the port authority in the heart of Manhattan. I mean, you get off, get out at the port authority and two blocks just in is Broadway. That's where all the theaters are. You're in the theater district. Uh, four or five blocks over here is Times Square. It's fantastic. Madison Square Garden over here. So uh, uh, that's where we like to stay because for something like, oh boy, I want to say it's 12 bucks round trip, something like that per person, something like that. It might be 15 now. It's a bargain. 
It's a bar dune because you uh, you don't have to worry about what time you're leaving or coming back. You buy a return ticket right when you get on that bus. Uh, and uh, you're good until, I think, 11 at night or midnight or something like that. And they start at 6 a.m. in the morning. It's a great service. There's only a couple of stops between the hotel uh, and the uh, the uh, terminal uh, and the, the, uh, the port authority because there's like one or two stops on the New Jersey side going to the tunnel, then through the, t the bus gets to go right into the tunnel because they have the bus access point. The driver, of course, knows how to cut everybody off. <laughs> and you get right into the tunnel, come out the other side, Port Authority, you get off the bus, you walk down a couple of flights of steps and you're in the, the Port Authority building and you follow the signage to the streets and you're right out in the heart of Manhattan. And the same on the way back, you come into the Port Authority and you head for your gate. You remember your gate number, it's on your ticket. And uh, bingo, go to the bus and you get the next one, you know, whichever one's next, you're, you're on it. And uh, through the tunnel, out the other side, uh, one or two stops, and then right to your hotel. And the hotel is just, just across the street from the stop. It's fantastic. Love it. And the hotel is much cheaper uh, than Manhattan. And you don't pay those Manhattan taxes, the city of New York and uh, the added state taxes. And uh, oh, it's a fortune. Yeah, I love it. Nina Frank, always number one uh, first. She can do her thing. Don't miss out. Like you said, it could be a once in a lifetime and you'll regret it forever. Absolutely. You got to do that excursion. You got to do it. Silo, more concerned about missing the cruise in the Haven on the Bliss. Not so concerned about wine and snacks. They have plenty. Well, there you go. Okay. If you're in the Haven, it's all good. <laughs> uh, Kathy Butler, uh, Bruce is too busy with Mrs. Bruce. For late night chats with us, he's no fool. Laughing out loud. <laughs> uh, me to do a late night show? I, I don't know if I could take it. I, I'm up at three, four in the morning. I'm working from four in the morning until about uh, seven thirty, eight o'clock, and then my wife goes off to work. I see her off. Uh, then I'll have a little nap sometime in the morning to kind of you know refresh a little bit, and then I get doing this work to get ready for my show, which starts at two o'clock my time, five o'clock Eastern. Uh, and then after the show's over, I got to post this video and get it all done. And then I start my research for tomorrow. So, and I do all my off, uh, my promotion of this channel and all these social websites. So doing two shows on Tuesdays and Thursdays is, is a challenge. I like it, but it's a challenge. Um, <laughs> she, I mean, first, uh, Kathy Butler, uh, she said she wasn't going to get her hair wet, but we are both grown and can pay for our own things. Although I would offer to pay for the snorkel excursion. Um, okay, Chevy, first, I'm going to talk with her tonight about it, see what she says. Kathy Butler, well, Chevy, if you're going to go with someone who doesn't swim and won't get her hair wet, you've done all you can do. If she's grown, go snorkel, girl. Go snorkel. Richard Kornemaska, hello, Bruce, back from the bar. Cheers. <laughs> Randy Lucas. Bruce, tell us about the Symphony of the Seas. Uh, that was the topic of the day. Scott Batchley, hi, Bruce, just recommended you to a newbie. Fantastic. Another newbie. Fabulous. Yeah, the Symphony of the Seas, I was just going to mention uh, to all of us, uh, to all of you, that today's the day that the shipbuilders in France handed over the keys to the ship to Royal Caribbean. She's now in Royal Caribbean's hands, which means that she's going to start making money now. Now she's going to start paying for herself $1.35 billion to build this baby. So I was just going to mention about some of the information about this ship uh, today's the day the royal caribbean has it uh 6680 passenger capacity maximum capacity 2200 crew members that equals 8880 people on one ship i'm living in a town creston 5300 here the whole town we could put the whole town of creston on that ship we still have room for you know another what is it, 33 and 3,500 more? <laughs> Unbelievable. 230,000 gross tons, massive. 1,188 feet long, 215 feet wide, they're telling me. And it takes a 30-foot draft. So it, it only needs 35 feet of water depth, and it won't hit the bottom. That's incredible for a ship of that size uh, with that, was many, that many people. 18 decks on this baby and 25 mile an hour cruise speed amazing uh so in 24 hours if it was to go for 24 hours straight 600 miles she can go 600 miles in a day so 
Flying the Caribbean, uh, come hurricane season, just like the other th three ships in her size, these massive monsters will not get caught in a hurricane. They can outrun it. They know where the hurricane is from their onboard satellite systems. If the satellite systems go out, they've got radio communication with, with, uh, with the head office or they have satellite uh, telephone communication uh, to figure out where they have to go. Um, they have ham radios on board, uh, you know, anything like that, two-way radios to talk to the nearest port. They know always where they are because they got the, uh, com the uh, computerized charting and manual charting. And so they can figure out where they are and where they got to be and where they got to go. And uh, they will never be caught by surprise by a massive Category 5 hurricane. That's not ever going to happen to these guys. So <clears throat> if you're on the ship, you're supposed to be on a one-week cruise, and you're supposed to go to St. Thomas and St. Martin or Labadee, and there's a hurricane coming your way, they will steer the ship away from trouble, and they can go 600 miles in 24 hours to stay out of trouble. Um, and if your home port, say Port Canaveral or Fort, or Fort Lauderdale, uh, you're supposed to come back to Fort Lauderdale in five days, but uh, by the time five days rolls around, there's a hurricane barreling through Fort Lauderdale. They either will have you go back early and give you a big credit for your next cruise uh, and either pick up whatever passengers they can early and get out, uh, or they won't go back at all, and they'll keep you on the ship longer at no extra charge. Um, to ride out the storm at the in the Atlantic while that storm passes, and then they head back to Fort Lauderdale, and they'll help you arrange your flight rearrangements because no flights are taken off anyway. Uh, it's not like you missed your flight; your flight wasn't going, uh, and they'll help book you the next one to take care. Of. So these ships are ideal for the Caribbean because there is no port that they have to miss that's more than six hundred miles away and even if there is they need to sail for two days they can go 1200 miles in two days they got enough gas in the tank to get you to where they gotta go what an amazing machine 24 guest elevators on this monster uh there are dining venues 20 of them seven are free uh 12 13 you gotta pay extra for including a johnny rockets uh there are 2759 staterooms on board the ship which with uh with full down uh fold out couches and everything else for the kids 6680 passengers can be looked after at a time on this behemoth of a cruise ship and like i said 1.35 billion to build what a what a machine unbelievable it's going to be so popular the harmony of the seas has been a huge hit the allure of the seas has been a huge hit i was thinking of the allure these the first the oysters of the seas the allure of the seas they've been they've been on the seas now four or five years uh you think about five thousand passengers a week at just a conservative guess as to how many people have been on the allure that's uh 50 weeks a year um two and a half million a year two and a half million people uh, for five years 12 and a half million people have been on that ship and then also on the oasis 10 million at least have been on the oasis and now the harmony is handling five 5,500, 6,000 a cruise. And now this one, 6,600, as many as 6,600. Just think about these four ships every week, at least 5,000 passengers a week per. That's 20,000 passengers a week. That's 10 million a year going on these ships. The numbers are staggering. Just just staggering. If I got my, if I got my math, if my math's right, or is my math wrong? Is it a million a year? Uh, oh, it might be a million a year. So twenty thousand a week uh, times five weeks is two is a hundred thousand times to ten. A million passengers a year on these four ships going forward. Uh, so the uh, the allure is done. Uh, uh, sorry, my math is way off. <laughs> is done is done a lot. <laughs> Hundreds of thousands of passengers. And we were talking here yesterday and the day before. I was talking about cruise ships from 15, 20 years ago that were brand new, biggest ship ever built. 2,500 passengers. Biggest ship ever built, 2,700 passengers. Here, 6,680. Unbelievable. There was a time where half this size, 3,300 passengers, was never done before. Uh, and when that first happened, that was unbelievable. And now I'm hearing uh, ships that will be larger, larger than this, for passenger capacity 
over the next five years. So we may be hearing about 7,000, 7,500 passengers, maybe 8,000 passengers, 3,000 crew, 11,000 people. Amazing what's being designed and conjured up by the engineers uh, going forward. It, it is going to be truly, truly something. Uh, let's see here. Uh, um, <laughs> Uh, let's see. I'm just going to go back to my messages because people have been messaging while I've been talking away here. Uh, yeah. Okay. Scott Batchy just recommended you to newbie. Nina Frank, I can uh, I can see her uh, in front of me. You shouldn't have to pay her a spa treatment or anything for not coming along. If anything, the opposite. Kathy Butler, I didn't mean to pay for the spa. I just suggested it. Uh, she seems tense. <laughs> Laugh out loud. <laughs> Richard Kormansky, Bruce, uh, when do you think we will see a ship that has 10,000 paying passengers? Uh, paying passengers, I don't know if it'll be in five years, but, uh, you know, nothing. I, I wouldn't put it past anybody. Uh, you never know. I think these take two and a half years to build. So uh, five, seven years, 10 years from now, on the drawing board, I'm sure they already exist. These ships exist already on the drawing board. Royal Caribbean seems too crowded for me. Any past Royal Caribbean cruisers feel like it was overcrowded to enjoy? A good question there from Kathy. Peter Heckham, I booked on Symphony in uh, November. First cruise out of South Florida. Really looking forward to it. We have been on the Allure before. Scott McPhee is here. I keep on wanting to do a medium-sized ship, but keep on going back to the big ones. How about that? Uh, Tammy Ray, uh, Richard Kormaski, 10,000 would be way too many people. My husband already doesn't like the overly large ships. Richard Kormaski, Tammy, I think a larger ship would have more uh, to do, so all the people are not grouped together, so it should be pretty good. But uh, was on a 4,200-person sh ship. Seemed like no one was ab was aboard doing the doing the various uh, venue, uh, do the various venues. Tammy Ray, I would be hoping for them to keep me longer on the ship in a storm. Yep. Charles Jordan and Kathy Butler, we thought it would be uh, overcrowded when we went this past June. We found it just the opposite. The way it was laid out into zones and the sheer size of the Oasis made a big difference. Well, how about that? Very interesting. Charles Jordan, we loved it so much that we've already booked it for this uh, December. Going back. Peter Heckema, right, Charles? We noticed the same thing. Doesn't feel like 5,000 people are sailing with you at all. Doesn't feel like it at all. Charles Jordan, Peter Heckema, giving you thumbs ups. Kathy Butler, thanks, everyone, for the input. Randy Lucas, wow, Bruce, 40 watching and 40 thumbs ups. How about that? Got to love it. Thanks, everybody, for joining in today. This is great. Uh, Scott McPhee, size matters. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Uh, I was going to mention a couple little points uh, on um, uh, in the news. Um, Cozumel in Mexico. It looks like the U.S. State Department has lifted the advisory, the travel advisory for Americans going on those ferries uh, that take you into the mainland to take the tours. So all the the all clear has been given. Uh, so that's good news there. Uh, and then the other little bit of information I came up with today was uh, the MSC people are building a new ship called the Bellissima, huge ship. It's it's about as big as the uh, Symphony of the Seas. Uh, I think it's going to be for European cruising, if I'm not mistaken, but I could be wrong. Anyway, uh, they're announcing that on that ship, they're going to have virtual assistant um, uh, uh, travel assistance, virtual, like AI, or artificial intelligence travel assistance in a virtual format on your smartphone. So uh, no matter what language you speak, uh, they'll be able to help you. So for the Europeans, uh, those who speak Italian or French or Spanish or Portuguese or German, uh, those passengers getting on the ship will have in their hand an artificial intelligence virtual assistant Where's my room? Just enter your room number. It'll tell you where you are, where your room is, how to get there. Where is the steakhouse? Where is the theater? How do I find the whatever? So for five, 6,000 people, of which you might have seven or eight languages going on at the same time, this is handy. Uh, this will be a very handy feature. They're going to build it for all ships. This is going to be incorporated into all MSC ships. Be looking for that also on all Royal Caribbean, Carnival, and Norwegian cruise line ships and all the um, sister lines that they own. 
this will also be a standard issue deal for all cruise lines. This is this. We're going to hear a lot more about this. We're going to learn a lot more about this uh, going forward. But I caught this announcement. Uh, I think I caught it this morning on the MSC site about uh, about the virtual assistant. Uh, now I'm wondering if there's going to be any smart alecky comments about the C site. <laughs> <laughs> Sonny Wallace, love you, Bruce. Uh, Randy Lucas, Scott M. Laughing out loud. Scott McPhee, what are your three favorite embarkation ports? Embarkation ports. Well, I got to say, uh, I haven't done very many of them, to be honest. So uh, I'm going to say uh, uh, I, I, didn't, I didn't like New Jersey that much. Um, uh, I, was, uh, I, was, I got on the Royal Caribbean Explorer of the Seas uh, in New Jersey. Um, and the name of the port will come back to me in a minute because right now I'm losing it. I'm getting tired. Um, but I found that we, we, we checked in to the terminal and then we had to get on, we had to wait to be called to get into a, uh, like another room, uh, because they, you know, you had a color bar, you know, like the reds, the orange, the greens, whatever. So we finally got called to the whatever, and we had our carry on baggage. Uh, we walked in through, uh, through a room into a spot and then we had to get in line to get on a bus and then we got into the bus and then we took the bus all the way to the ship because it was all the way down uh, like a mile away or half a mile away in distance and when we got there we got off the bus and then we were able to just walk on i think it was a gangplank right onto the fourth or fifth level of the ship so we were just like as if we were in a caribbean island but this was in new jersey and it was in the 50s and a bit windy. Um, so I, I didn't like it that much. Um, I still can't remember the name of the ship, or the name of the, uh, the, name of the um, embarkation port in New Jersey. Anybody want to help me with that? Uh, just, just a little too tired. Um, anyway, it'll come back. Then, uh, then uh, the next port that I got on a ship on would have been uh, uh, San Diego. And that was uh, interesting because you, went, you were off the street and there was a parking lot there. And then you walked, the ship was right there. Like you're just looking at the ship. Was, you could almost throw a snowball at it if you're in Canada. A uh, tennis ball if you're in San Diego. Anyway, uh, you walked on into a, into a it looks like a, a, a inflated tent type building. Really what it was. It's like a temporary structure. And we got inside there. And then we had to go through the lineup. And we got to a check-in area. And I think we then handed off our bag after we checked in. And then from there, we just walked down another area through a security uh, area, you know, like airport security. And then from there into a waiting room. And then from there right onto the ship. And that was easy. That was that was pretty simple. Uh, Los Angeles was okay because you uh, you got to hand your bag to the sky porter outside. And then you walked in through, uh, through a, a building, up some escalators, and you came into this massive check-in area. And that was very efficient. Uh, I checked in with the, with the agent through security and then into a waiting room. And from there onto the ship, and you were already high up, uh, you know, about four or five stories up in the air. And uh, you walked along the gangplank and then onto the ship, and they came into the atrium area. Beautiful. Really, really nicely done for both princess cruises I took. Really enjoyed that. So uh, that was okay. Uh, Bayon, New Jersey. Thank you. Bayon. I couldn't remember the name Bayon, New Jersey. Yeah, Bayon was uh, the same thing on the on the way out when we were done the cruise. We had to take a we had to get off the ship in in shifts, like you know, wait for your code to be called. We were in a certain bar. We all gathered there. Then they took us in, in en masse from there to the gangplank. From the gangplank, we then went through a customs thing and then down to the bottom of the. No, no, I don't remember. If we did. I think we went down the ship in, in the elevator to the lower level, onto a bus, into the terminal building, through customs there, and then to our bags. And then and, and, and I, I found that to be a bit disjointed. It worked. It worked. Uh, it, it, it was effective. It, it, they got it done. But I, I found it to be a pain getting off that ship first thing and all that sort of stuff. That was just me. Uh, let's see what people are saying here about embarkation ports. Randy Lucas Scott said, we love uh, San Francisco, Fort Lauderdale, Long Beach. Uh, Richard Kornomaski, Scott, uh, 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 um, Civit, uh, uh, Rome. <laughs> I can't pronounce it. I, I want to say, I always see that and I think of the golfer Mark, Mark Calcavecchia. 
<laughs> I want to look at that and go, oh, that's Calcavecchia. Uh, no, there's no L in there. <laughs> Rome. Randy Lucas, oh, Miami, and, and Rome also. Scott McPhee, where did you stay when you were on that cruise that embarked New Jersey? Uh, Embassy Suites. Uh, we stayed at the Embassy Suites. Um, uh, so on the way, uh, when we got on the ship, we, uh, we took a cab from there to the ship. A bit pricey. But on the way back, we took a uh, hotel right by the New Jersey airport. And um, I think we took a cab as well for 15 bucks or something like that, maybe 20, right to the hotel. Might have been a Marriott, uh, the airport Marriott or something like that. And then the next day, we had a departure out of, uh, out of there to, um, to uh, uh, Calgary. But when we got off the ship, we got into the hotel and we got to the hotel at about like 11 o'clock, and we had decided, my wife and I had decided, we would go to New York. We're going to Manhattan. So what we did was uh, we couldn't check into the room. We didn't care. It didn't matter. But we were able to check our bags with the hotel. So we checked our bags into the hotel, and we only had, she just had her purse, and uh, we uh, then grabbed a, um, I think we grabbed a bus or a, or a quick cab ride to the train station. Because we had figured out how to get to Manhattan from the um, from the Jersey side by rail, and so we took a train into Manhattan to the Port Authority, or to Penn Station anyway, and then we did we did New York for the day, uh, and then that uh, afternoon by about five in the evening, five thirty, we went back to Penn Station, and we were going to take we were going to take the train, of course, and on the way to the train, we found all these vendors along the uh, walkway who had set up to sell commuters items on the way home. And one of the items we saw was this, uh, they, were, they had home baked uh, goodies. Uh, a couple of ladies were there every day with baked goods. And uh, we bought ourselves a wonderful pastry thing. And they had the knives and the forks and the plates. They had it all. So we bought the whole thing and put it in a bag and then took it with us on the train to the hotel because uh, we'd eaten in New York already, so we didn't have to worry about dinner. And we had dessert waiting for us in our hotel room that evening. And then the next morning, we were packed up, and uh, we grabbed the cab right to the airport. And uh, by 9 o'clock or 8.30, our flight took off from New Jersey to uh, to uh, Calgary. That was how we made, made it back home. Uh, Sonny Wallace, Bay Bayonne, New Jersey, uh, Iskew Park. Mine is landing in Fort Lauderdale. Short hop on their train or their rail system to Miami. The Miami port system and ease is the best we've seen. Uh, Peter Heckema, Cape Liberty Cruise Port in New Jersey. Uh, Paula K. Hi, Bruce. Forty in Hanover, PA. Our eight, our eighteen inches of that beautiful snow <laughs> is down to about eight inches and melting quickly. Thank goodness for that, Paula K. Kathy Butler sailed out of New Orleans. Hated that port. It may be more modern now, though. Want to try Seattle uh, one day on my way to Alaska. Want to try that port. He, Peter Heckema, even with the boarding, the large Royal Caribbean ships, they have check-in and boarding down to a science very fast. I would like that to try that very much uh, in Port, port Lauderdale. Uh, Michelle Lucas, Vancouver Terminal is the worst. Is the worst. 2,000 people waiting in warehouse on folding chairs. Wait by number for two hours. Oh, gosh, yeah. That's awful. That's awful. Yeah, Vancouver. The taxes are high, but the service is low. Just, gosh, terrible. Kathy Butler, thanks for sharing, Michelle. Uh, what cruise line out of Vancouver? Would that have been Princess, maybe? Um, I'm not sure who goes in and out of there. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't, wouldn't want that. Oh, my gosh. Michelle, Kathy Butler, Princess. Princess, three other lines make that two warehouses. I remember in 1986 they built that they built that whole thing for the 86 World's Fair, the World Exposition, and I went to the World Expo with my wife. And uh, during the expo, they took the I think the top half of that structure that this looks like a whole bunch of white sails. It's all a kind of a uh, the polyethylene type uh, material they used to build the roof of this structure on the pier itself and they they built a full canada pavilion type promo promo thing during the 86 exposition and uh i've never been there though for a cruise i've never cruised out of vancouver uh because they just aren't cheap cruises out of vancouver <laughs> they just aren't <laughs> 
uh, Richard Kornemaski Port in Anchorage is about a three and a half hour drive from the airport to Seaward. The worst. Oh man, that's got to be bad. If you're if you're ever flying up there to take a cruise back to uh, Seattle, you got to do this routine. Yuck! Very very yuck. That would not be fun at all. Not fun at all. No. I, I found the LA uh, the LA port okay. Like I said, the first time I did LA was with the uh, Princess Cruise Line bus. Took me right there, picked us up, took us back to the airport. Easy peasy. Uh, the second time my wife and I did LA was last year. We drove in. We had our uh, we had a rental van that we were using because we had a, we had a side trip planned. Uh, so we had driven down from Canada in a rental van and did Vegas and then visited some friends in Phoenix. And then we uh, plotted uh, a cruise uh, well in advance, but we had plotted a cruise. So we had driven from Phoenix into Los Angeles. So we left Phoenix very early in the morning. Was maybe we're on, the, we're on the road by seven, eight in the morning and uh, drove all the way in there, no problem. And um, I think our cruise was leaving on a Saturday. So we didn't have to worry about rush hour for LA rush hour. Not that that intimidates me anyway. But we did the route, the, the highway thing, because I've I've driven I've driven there a million times when I lived in Palm Springs, Palm Desert, California, and so we got to the ship and uh, we parked the car right in the parking lot, right by the cruise ship, perfecto. And I took the took the van right to the drop off area, right across the street from the the sky guys, sky caps, unloaded all of our luggage, unloaded Mrs. Traveling with Bruce. She stood with the bags. I then went and parked the van walked back to meet Mrs. Traveling with Bruce. And then we crossed the street together, just pulling our rollaways and handed them to the Sky Cabs. And uh, we only had our carry-on with us. Perfecto. And on the way back, at the end of the cruise, we didn't care what time we got off the ship. No hurry, because we were taking the van over to uh, towards the desert. Uh, anyway, we're going to spend a few days in the desert. It was about a two-hour drive from there. We didn't care. So uh, when we got off the ship, we got off the ship and uh, through customs, got our bags, walked across the street, dropped my, my bags off with Mrs. Traveling with Bruce in the staging area, went and got the van, drove the van to, the, to Mrs. Traveling with Bruce, got the bags in there. She hopped in the van and we checked out, paid for the parking on the way out the door. And we're on the highways of Los Angeles heading for the desert. First stop, In-N-Out Burger, baby. Going for an In-N-Out Burger. And fries, that's the first stop after a cruise because that's you got to get something to kind of tide you over because you know you're starving. As soon as you get off the cruise ship, you're starving. I mean, there's no food on the cruise anymore. We ate it all, but we had In N Out Burger for lunch that day. Fantastic. Um, <laughs> let's see. Richard Karmaski, Port in Anchorage is terrible. Uh, Steaming Bean, have you ever considered interviewing a fellow cruise critic? Uh, are you talking about like a, a fellow uh, YouTuber, like doing a collaboration video? Are you talking about that? Because that is in my uh, wheel. I am thinking of that bigly. I would like to do that. Um, seeming mean, Harvey's is actually tastier than in and out Well, Harvey's is pretty good. In Canada, not not bad. But I don't mind the in and outs Don't mind them a bit. I uh, like the way they make them. I like both because, you know, Harvey's has the charbroiled uh, thing and in and out fries there, both very good. Uh, yes, a fellow YouTuber, he's asking me. Yes, I would very much like to do a collaboration, several collaboration uh, deals where even on my live stream, I would love to have a uh, YouTuber, you know, with me. I'm going to have to learn how to use the OBS software and all that stuff for the split picture and all that stuff. Uh, but as time goes on, YouTube is making it more and more easy for me to, to do this with others. Uh, but even doing a video, like a, just a regular video with another collaborator, and then I'll do a video with them on theirs, and they'll do one on mine. Yes, I, I am definitely interested in that. Love to do one with uh, with uh, uh, with uh, Jim uh, Jim Zip Jim Zim. I, I would be fabulous if if uh, I could do something with Jim because he's got so many followers. That'd be great. I noticed some of my followers follow him, which is cool. Uh, and then, uh, you know, Sherry, uh, Sherry on uh, Cruise TV or uh, uh, Don's, uh, Don's family travel. I actually contacted Don up in Edmonton about maybe doing something. He's, he's just up to here with, with just work. Uh, but, uh, you know, th th there will come a time I will be doing this uh, going forward. I think it'll be a lot of fun. 
uh, very helpful. Um, uh, favorite YouTubers, uh, well, De Jim Zim for sure uh, uh, is one of mine, and um, and then I have a number of others out there. Uh, let me see. Try uh, Richard Cornassi saying, try Scott Singer. Singer, he just got picked up on a TV show from his YouTube blog, and Kathy Butler saw Jim Zim interview a British Cruise TV or she was asking him how he could possibly dislike the MSC Seaside, laughing out loud. You're talking about Emma, the young gal Emma. She's got about 600 subscribers. Yeah, she's new. Uh, Jim Zim is the man uh, with the moolah, <laughs> steaming Venus. <laughs> uh, Michelle Lucas, I vote Randy for uh, Brucey buddy assistant. <laughs> steaming Bean, who's Don? Well, he has a, he has a uh, channel called Don's Family Vacations. And um, he does, uh, he do, he's a travel agent, full-time travel agent, who does YouTube on the side. He's been on a little longer than I have. He's got about just about 8,000 subscribers now. Just hit 8,000. Uh, Kathy Butler, I love Don, she says. Uh, Charlie Baum, uh, coming back from Vietnam, I went to what? I went to, uh, to what a burgers in 69. Uh, <laughs> Steaming Bean, cruising with wheels. Uh, there's another one, cruising with wheels. Um, Steaming Bean, La Lido Loca. I've been, I've watched those guys. Yeah, I've watched those guys too. There's so many of them. There's just so many of them. And, uh, you know, some of them just do a video once a week or once every once in a while. Others do regularly post videos. Some of them only like to do uh, videos, like just videos. They don't do live streams. Uh, some do a little of both, um, you know. So I, I'm open to all kinds of ideas. Uh, a silo, the wheels guys are a hoot. Uh, if any of you folks know any of these folks, uh, tell them about me. Tell them that, hey, have you ever seen Bruce traveling with Bruce? He's a great guy. He'd like to do, he loves to do collaborations. He'd love to do one. Uh, you know, any promotion I can get, I'll take it. If any of those folks respond to you, let me know. Um, a steamy bean, but Bruce is at the top of the list. He says, <laughs> "Bruce, uh, Bruce, I'm still offering you two bucks to take off your shirt. I'm still, I'm still willing to throw that two bucks around loosely. But steamy bean, you're in Canada, so you're talking about two Canadian dollars. Uh, you know, we're talking Mexican currency here. Uh, you know, <laughs> Pamela Jordan, good night, all. See y'all next time. Uh, let me look at the time. Oh, an hour forty nine minutes." Yeah, I think we're kind of getting to the end of the show. Uh, Kathy Butler uh, could interview cruise line reps. I've seen those videos too. Uh, Peter Heckema, uh, got to go, Bruce. Have a great weekend. Kathy Butler, just Bruce is cool though. Thanks all you guys for joining in today on the show. Uh, thank you for the super chats. I think we got three today, two bucks a piece or so. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, every little bit helps. A little bit of hot dog money for the weekend. I'm on again tomorrow at 2 o'clock Eastern time, and we'll catch all you guys, uh, your regulars there if you want to join me. Thanks for the newbies who came by today. This is fantastic. Any of you who are thinking of becoming a subscriber, please do that. It's free. There's a button here. There's a button there. And if you subscribe, there's a bell icon beside one of those buttons. Hit that. I'll notify you every time. You'll be automatically notified by YouTube every time Bruce is on the air. So that would be great. Thanks for the thumbs ups today, guys. I really appreciate everybody giving me thumbs ups. And have a great evening. Uh, Steamy Bean, thanks, Bruce. Silo, best cruise ship live cam is the Miami government. Uh, cut Monday to Friday, can get busy. Fun to watch folks going on a trip. Kathy Butler, good night. See you tomorrow. Good night, everybody. This is Bruce with Traveling with Bruce saying his goodbyes for now. Tomorrow, 2 p.m. Eastern time, I'm on the air. I'm taking Sunday off. And then we're at it again on Monday. So have a good one now, guys. Take a good, have a good evening. Take her easy. We'll see you tomorrow too if you're joining me then. Take care. Bye-bye.